Hello! Welcome to a new calculator tutorial for the TI-84+. Plus. Today we'll be discussing how to create what is known as a residual plot, which is yet another way to determine the validity of a line of best fit. Now, what I have here, I have data already stored in my lists already. In this case, I have my explanatory data listed in list 1, and my response data in list 2. In this case, this is the minutes of time spent studying for a test and the uh, scores from that test. So each of these indicating a separate student. So I have 16 values here. Numbers going from 0 to 60, and then I have scores ranging from somewhere in the 60s down up to somewhere in the 90s. Alright, now if I look at the data itself, uh, if I just look at what is the scatter plot, I can go to second, stat plot, go to plot 1, I already have mine set up, so it's on the first option for a scatter plot, then list 1 and list 2. And if I zoom 9 on that, I have my scatter plot here. Now this already looks pretty linear. I'd say that a, a line of best fit, a, uh, a linear uh, fit would probably be a great way to explain this data. But we want to make a residual plot, which will calculate the residuals between what is expected and what is observed. So we're going to want to work with that. Now, the first thing that I'm going to want to do, I don't necessarily need to look at this plot first, but it's handy to know what we're dealing with. What we want to do first is get the line of best fit itself, and we want to have it stored as a variable. So I'm going to go to stat, and I'm going to go down to linreg, which is something that we did in a previous video. This way we can get the linear regression line using our x list, our explanatory variable, and our y list, our response variable, which is in list 1 and list 2. I don't have a frequency list here, but this is the important part, store reg EQ. Now we did this earlier so that we wouldn't have to type it in and it would already plot it for us along with the scatter plot. But what's more important here, this reg EQ is actually a variable in the calculator. And so when I store something in reg EQ, whatever the regression equation is will be stored somewhere in the calculator for us to recall. So again, I'm going to do that by doing alpha trace and putting in y1. Now again, if that doesn't work for you, depending on your calculator, there's another way of getting y1. I'll clear it out to show you. Instead of getting y1 with alpha trace, you can also do vars, go over to y vars, and in function, you'll find all the functions y1 through y9. So I can put y1 there. This is good for 83s that don't have a wizard, and I believe uh, the first version of 84s do not have the wizard either. However, again, we want to list one, list two, and storing the reg equation is important. So we calculate. We get our regression equation. We have our uh, slope. We have our y-intercept, and we have our correlation coefficient and our uh, coefficient of determination. This indicating that this is probably pretty good. We can look at the critical value later to determine how good the line is, but we can also determine that with the residual plot, which is what we're going to be doing here. Now, this slope and the y-intercept is the linreg that was stored into reg eq, which is the important part. Otherwise, you'd have to write this down and type it in later, but we're going to have it saved for us. Now, again, I'm going to be dealing with a residual plot, which means I'm going to be wanting to plot the explanatory variable versus the residuals, the residuals being the difference between what is expected and what is observed. So, what we need to do first is get what is expected and we get that from the regression equation itself. To access that, I'm in the list, and I go up to L3, highlighting on the top of the list, so it says L3 equals, and I want to put in the full regression equation here. Now again, I could have uh, written that down, but I already moved away from the screen, I don't remember what the numbers are, but because we saved them before, then that means we could pull it up again. Now I want to go to VARES, and I'm going to go down to the fifth option here, statistics. I'm going to go down to 5. The third tab over, EQ, is where our equation is going to be. You'll notice a lot of these symbols have, have shown up before in one var stats, and when you run those kind of functions, it does save the variables themselves, so you can use them for other purposes. But we go over to, re to EQ, and we have regression equation as the first option, and also we have A, B, and the other variables if you need them. But we want reg EQ, so hit enter on that. 
And there you go. It, pl it plotted and put the information into L3 for me. Look at that. Now, if I hit enter, I'm going to get an error. For example, if I hit enter here, it says error data type, mainly because it doesn't know what X is. So that's not what I'm going to want to do. Uh, I'm going to go back to the list. I'm going to go over to L3. And I'm going to pull up the EQ again. So reg EQ. Now what I want to do, instead of this X variable here, what I'm going to want to do is replace that X with each of the values that I want to plug into this equation, which is the explanatory variables themselves. So instead of X, I'm going to put in 0. And then instead of X, I'm going to put in 10, and then 15, and 25, and see what I expect to get. So since all my expected values or explanatory variables are in L1, I'm going to replace X by just doing second L1. And it replaces X when highlighted on it. There's other ways to do this, but this is probably the fastest way. So we get L1 in here, and now if we run, it's going to take each of the values from L1, plug into this equation, and give me the outputs here. So I hit enter. And there we go. It's expected that if you study for zero, you're going to get a 67 on the test. If you study for 10 minutes, you can get a 71 on the test. At 15 minutes, you get 73 on the test. Notice that these are not exactly what was observed, but that's, that's what we expect to happen. We don't expect the uh, explanatory and the observed to match up perfectly unless we have uh, a perfect line itself. All right, so here in L3, we have what is expected. In L2, we have what is observed. So in L4, we're going to want to find this, uh, the difference between those. In this case, I'm going to do the observed, which is in L2, minus the expected, which is in L3. That will find the residuals, which is um, what we need for the residual plot. So L2 minus L3, or the observed minus the expected. If I do that... You'll notice I get the first value, I have negative 2. That means what was expected, or what was observed, was 2 below what was actually expected, which makes sense here. I expected to get 67 based on my formula, but I observed a value of 65 based on this first student. Likewise, in the second value here, um, there's 6.3 as my residual, which means that my observed was 6 higher than my expected, which again makes sense here. Oh, a little bit over six anyway. Um, so seven, 71 was what was expected if you study for 10 minutes, but this person actually scored a 78. So they scored higher. So that makes sense for the residuals themselves. All right. So now that we have all of our data in here, we're going to make the residual plots using our explanatory variable, which is in list one, and our residuals, which is in list four. So I'm going to go to second, stat plot, go into plot one like we have before. And I have my scatter plot selected. My X list, again, is going to stay the same. It's just the explanatory variable. And instead of my response variable, what I'm looking at are the residuals. So I put L4 here instead. With that in mind, I hit zoom 9. And there we go. I have all of my data points plotted. And now everything is coming away from the X axis itself. That's what the residual plot does. It takes the line of best fit and rotates it basically so the line of best fit becomes the X axis. And then the height from any point to the X axis is the length of the residual or how far away an observed value, which is each of these dots from what is expected, which is this axis itself. And again, I can trace all these values and I get my explanatory and not my response. And in this case, these are my residuals. That is how you create a residual plot in a TI calculator. Um, with that in mind, that's everything that I wanted to go through with this concept. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Or if you're one of my students, feel free to email me or just come talk to me and I'll see what I can do to help. But uh, with that in mind, I'll see you in another video.